Hey, how's you going? Uh, this is uh, Tex, and this is Tex Talks. Today's topic is on a question that was asked um, specifically, how do I know I'm getting better? Um, I would counter with, how do you know you aren't? No, seriously. Um, if you have put in the time and effort, and this is where it's important, to keep a little journal of where you're at, how you're doing. Um, Therapists will sometimes have you take these tests called PHQ or GAD, and the patient health questionnaire asks ask questions about sadness. And the GAD, amazingly enough, sounds almost like generalized anxiety disorder, but it's a diagnostic tool to let someone know how much stress, worry, anxiety you might be facing for the last two weeks. Both of them are on a two-week basis. Why is that important? Filling out that when they first see you, filling that out as you go along gives them an idea of where you're at now. Since one of the main things that you're looking for, if you're doing therapy specifically for anxiety and depression, would be, are you having symptoms diminish? Uh, a lot of times that is part of your treatment goal, to reduce that score, uh, to to have a two-week period where you feel better and you have less problems with sadness or hopelessness or worry or stress. Those things are measurement instruments that you can use. But there's a lot of good apps out there. If you go on the phone, I have several clients who tell me they have tracking apps because they don't like the old-fashioned paper and pen. And I know this is the generation of the digital world. They have an app on their phone, and every day they go in and rate their mood. They, you know, rate their worry levels. They say how much they slept. All those things would be the same thing you would put on a piece of paper, a scorecard. Uh, if you do DBT, you might be doing a journaling card where daily you write down all those things uh, to include if you had a crisis, what triggered it, how you handled it, what results you got out of handling it that way. Along with what kind of mood do you have today? How are you feeling? How much did you sleep? You know, the whole thing. The point of that, along with did you take your meds? When did you take your meds? Did you eat? Did you exercise? You go, gosh, it's a lot of information. Well, gosh, it's a lot of stuff that directly affects and is affected by how you're doing. Amazingly enough, no matter how you're doing today, odds are two months from now, if I ask you how you're doing, your comparison levels will not be to two months ago. Your comparison levels are going to be to some significant point that you think of, either overall or maybe within the last two weeks. Think about it. If over two months, every day, you're steadily getting better and 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 better. But then one or two days before therapy, you have a sucky day. You come into my office, how are you doing? It sucks. Thing is, overall, you were doing much better. Yes, you have two days that are bad. But they're the last two days. So when you want to know how you're doing, you need to know how you've been and where you're going. This is basic therapy stuff, basic CBT, DBT, all that. There's a reason for doing those homework, papers, apps, quizzes that let us know how you're doing from a standout measuring kind of way because you often will not know. Oddly enough, you may be doing better but think you're doing worse. In fact, here's an interesting point. If your therapy is going well and you're becoming cognizant, understanding what's going on around you and you're seeing it, and even if you're handling it better, you may feel temporarily more stressed because you, in your mind, feel more anxious about what's going on because you understand it better. Even though through understanding, you will eventually get better because you start working the things you need to do to feel better, get around it, solve the problem, change your mood states. You feel in your mind things are going worse. And think about it. 
that might be a reason to change. Go back to what you're doing instead of doing what you could be doing. Let me clarify that. It's like food. Changing to a healthier diet. If you've been eating junk food, you've been eating at Burger Hopper or Chicken Flicking, and then you go up there and you start eating salads. Your stomach might not like that because it's a change. It's different. And then you go, oh, see, eating those salads makes me feel bad. I need to go back to eating, you know, greasy, you know, heart-stopping hamburgers. Or, you know, I need to start, you know, choking on the chicken and, you know, <laughs> ooh, fried chicken, yum, yum, sugar, yum, yum, yum. You might want to go to crack filet and get that fix. Because suddenly salads are a problem only because of the temporary change. If you note that, though, and you ride through it, eventually you will get to the point where eating the salads is your new norm. And if you start craving and thinking about, ooh, let me go back and eat some of that junk food, and you go to Burger Hopper, and you eat, then you want to puke your guts up. That is a sure sign that something is bad about food. If you quit eating it for a time period, and then when you go back and eat it again, it makes you sick. Don't do it, people. So, how do you know you're getting better? Tracking it. Keeping an eye on it. Interestingly enough, it may even be, and this is where you need to note, ask your family how you're doing and annotate that too. Because they may disagree with you. You may think thing, things are the same old, same old. And I may look at your family and go, Oh, how are things going home? They're like, great. It's much better. And you're going, no, no change. Don't feel no different. There can be a difference. You just have to be able to notice it. And sometimes when you're in the middle of the hurricane, looking out, you don't see everything that's going on. You don't see the changes. Everything looks the same. It's not. Things around you are moving. So in this case, Take the test, quizzes, paperwork, do the app, write down, do your diary card. Doing your homework allows you to know things are changing. Also, when you do therapy, remember, you're always asked, what do you want? And how will you know you've gotten it? That's important. Because many times, over time, as things change, You'll meet the goals, won't even necessarily remember them, and think you want more, which is okay as long as you acknowledge, I met the goal that I came for. Now I have a new goal. That's great. But if you start and you meet your goal and you go, well, I don't no, we're not going to pay attention to that. You know, Really? You got where you want to be. Now, it may not always be what you think it is. You think by accomplishing this, things are going to be awesome, better. Maybe they're not. At least you proved you can accomplish a goal. Now that you know you want something different, you establish a better goal. Okay? So keep working on it. Pay attention to your goals. Write them down. Daily journal. Daily app. Daily, you know, card. Whatever you use. It is important. And you are accomplishing something if nothing else, keeping the card shows your ability to improve your function. And that's what it's all about. Y'all take care and I'll talk to you next time.